Welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. I want five minutes of your time, if possible, to help me answer this question. What is best, working self-employed or working employed? So I'm looking at the pros and cons here. I have worked self-employed before and I have worked employed. Currently, I am employed, but I am considering going self-employed again. I have dabbled with the idea a few times over the last few years, but it keeps coming back again and again and again. I do know one or two self-employed engineers who it's going well for, and they keep trying to convince me to go self-employed, but I want to look at the pros and cons, and I want to do some planning before diving in. The grass can look greener on the other side, but you do have to look at the pros and cons. There's also negatives of working self-employed, but there's also negatives of being employed and it depends on the individual. So let's have a look. Self-employment pros, you have the ability to set your own working hours. You can set your hours so you can decide what days you want to work. The client does also have some power to negotiate when they want the job done or the urgency. But at the end of the day, you're the person that shows up and says, it's not happening today, it's going to have to happen tomorrow. And that's between you and the client. So you can set your own work hours. And you can also say, well, we're going to work a 12-hour shift today and a six-hour shift tomorrow and things along those lines. When you're working self-employed, you can, you can grow in your job. I don't think growing is limited to self-employed people. I think you can grow in other ways because you have to deal with clients more. You have to do certain other things that you wouldn't do when you're self-employed. But I believe that that works for both. So I think you can grow in both areas, whether it's self-employed or nobody to answer to. You make all the decisions. That can be a good thing and a bad thing because working with people can humble you and also teach you how to be a team player. Whereas working self-employed can make you become a very grumpy person that only has to do with yourself. Okay, you have to do with the client. But I think that it can be a bad thing sometimes. But it is nice to not have to answer to annoying management. There are managers out there that can just be on a mission to annoy you. Or you can have good managers as well. It's ideal when you are the boss rather than somebody else is telling you what to do. Able to pick and choose what jobs to take on when you're self-employed. So that's true. You can reject some jobs and you can accept other jobs. Once This is once you get established and you've got work coming at you from all directions. You can overprice jobs that you don't want to do. Take the job if they do accept it. But you can pick and choose jobs. So that's a good thing. You can choose which jobs you want to do. Whereas when you're employed, it's tricky to step out of jobs. But you can pass jobs back even when you're employed. Once you get to a certain level in your trade, you can say, I am not doing that. You can reject certain things as an employed engineer as well. Time off whenever you want it. Helping with the work-life balance. I think that's true. There is opportunity to take time off, although you can lose money from doing that. And you probably do need somebody to be able to pick up work sometimes if you're on holiday or if you don't want to upset a certain customer, you can send somebody else there to do the job and then you can get a cut from the job by sending someone else to do it. Nonetheless, even when you're employed, certain managers will give you the time off and there'll be flexibility. You still can get time off. Okay, on to self-employed cons. No employee benefits. You get no sick pay. In my employed status, I do get holiday pay, which is good. Another con is it can be difficult to find work. Yes, there are periods of high stress where you're looking for work. So you'll be touting for work, scratching around, trying to find work, calling people up. And that can be a difficult time. Hard to say no to work. Yep, it can be hard to say no to some jobs, especially if you haven't got enough work on. Resulting in weekend and evening work, true. So when the evening work comes or the weekend work, you'll just sometimes have to take it. But once you get established, I don't think that will become the case. Money needed to buy on tools. Yep, there's a lot of outgoings, unforeseen costs. So tools, van, training, you're going to have to pay for all of that yourself. So you have to have that surplus money available couple thousand whether it be five ten grand in order to pay for these bits and pieces on the side inconsistent income that's true you can sometimes make say for instance one to three grand a week working self-employed and sometimes you may only make 500 pounds for a week so the money can be very sporadic that's the problem with being self-employed but at the same time there are times when you can make a fortune if you have the right client and the right work have to do your own marketing tax Accounting, yep, that's true. You have to do your own advertising. You have to do your own tax returns. If you've got a good accountant, no problem. 
So that can save you on the tax fines that you may receive if you've got a decent accountant. So if you've got certain things in place, the work is there, you've got, yeah, you've got the contacts, you've got the accountant, you've got good structure, you've got the funds available, say five, 10, 15 grand available to pay for certain things, then maybe it's a good idea to go self-employed. But I am considering going self-employed, but I'm not sure. I'd like to hear your opinion. Tell me what you think, whether you think I should go for it or not, whether you're self-employed or whether you're planning on going self-employed. I'd like to hear from a few people who have got experience being self-employed and whether you do jobs on the side and so on or whether you've had to build it up on the side. Let me know what you think because I do have my doubts. I've seen people who are self-employed who never stop answering their phone. They're always answering their phone in the evening, on the weekend. They're always having to take phone calls. They can't switch off from work. There's not sometimes there can be not much structure. One minute, the, the one day they're working, then they're not. So they bring about a lot of disruption to their family life and stress. So I I don't know if self-employed is for everybody. In my current room, it is not a very stressful role that I'm in, and I get chances to have breaks. And there's times when I'm not doing a lot of work and I'm waiting for call outs. And there are times when there are a few call outs, but nonetheless, it is not as hard as what I believe would be working self-employed when doing certain install work. Sometimes you can have a cushy number when you're employed. Sometimes with, I think if you're in an employed situation where it's tough and you are, and they have the whip out and you're doing a lot of driving and a lot of jobs and you're in that situation there, and you may even be doing work that you don't want to do. I think in those situations, maybe it is a good idea to run. But when you have a cushy number, it's difficult. I think that it's hard to make decision whether to be self-employed or employed. But tell me, guys, what do you think? What should I do? Should I go self-employed or should I stay put in what I'm doing? Thank you for joining me. Until next time, bye-bye-bye.